Have you ever watched a scene where they use a song and in that moment, it just feels like the most perfect song of all time? As if that was the only song in the history of music that could be used for that scene. And it creates a seismic experience. Your whole world shifts and you come out feeling like a totally changed human being where you can split your life into two. Everything that happened before watching that scene and everything after. That is how I feel about all the music moments in film I'm about to list for you. But please first hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more movie and TV related content. For this list, I won't be mentioning any original scores or musicals, just needle drops. So I won't be including my favorites, Interstellar or La La Land. I'm only focusing on movies where a scene was so greatly enhanced thanks to a particular song. Additionally, I won't be listing every iconic music movie scene, just those that left an emotional imprint on me. Number 9. Tiny Dancer Almost Famous So I am so late to the party. I've always heard about Almost Famous, but it wasn't until this year itself that I finally took the time to watch it after hearing my brother rave on and on about how good it is and how amazing a particular song was. So I watched it. And it is good. It feels nostalgic and within this scene where they're all belting out to Elton John's Tiny Dancer, I also feel like I'm riding on the bus, part of the band, just having the time of my life. Oh, Number 8, Stand By Me by Benny King from Stand By Me. Just like Tiny Dancer and Almost Famous, Benny King's Stand By Me just instantly gives me this huge feeling of nostalgia. The sound of the percussions and bells acts like a time machine. As soon as I hear that bass opening, I am transported into the 50s looking for a dead boy with my friends. The song encompasses the essence of the movie as a whole. It's happy and sad at the same time, which are the same emotions that come from viewing the film. Capping off the film with its titular song just seems like the obvious choice, the only choice, and the best choice. Number 7, The Sound of Silence from The Graduate. I am a huge fan of Simon and Garfunkel, and so I think this whole soundtrack to The Graduate is aces. But it's this final song that plays such a significant role in this poignant ending. The last 15 minutes or so of the entire film is action-packed, a huge adrenaline rush for our characters and for us, the audience. All we are concerned about is getting these two to successfully run away. It doesn't even occur to us to ask what's next, and evidently it doesn't occur to our characters either. Watching their smiles slowly fade into a look of concern and this sudden realization that they have no clue what is in store for them, accompanied by the sound of silence, is jarring and works beautifully. Hello darkness, my old friend. Number 6. You and Me, Blue Valentine Blue Valentine is one of those sad movies I just love to come back to time and time again. Intertwined between scenes in the present where our protagonists are on the brink of divorce and the past where we see them falling in love, there's just no way you can't come out of this film not feeling a little brokenhearted. And that's why I love Dean and Cindy's song, You and Me, by Penny and the Quarters. The song works on two levels. Seeing Dean and Cindy fall in love, it's a sweet song for them about two people choosing each other. But simultaneously knowing where the relationship is headed, it's painstaking. I can't hear the song without feeling bittersweet. Number 5, California Dreaming, Chunking Express. Probably the happiest song of this entire list, we have California Dreamin' by the Mamas and the Papas in Chunking Express. The magic of Chunking Express, especially the second half of the story that stars Tony Leung and Fei Wang, is in a word, is innocence. The happiness and innocence of Fei Wang's character exudes through the scene to the audience. Through Christopher Doyle's stunning carefree cinematography, Fei Wang's dancing, and just the vision and mood set forth by Wang Kar Wai, adding American hit song California Dreamin', a 60s flower power anthem, which is arguably the most quintessential innocent carefree generation of our time, was just art. Number 4. In Heaven, Lady in the Radiator Song from Eraserhead David Lynch once said, Sound is almost like a drug. It's so pure that when it goes in your ears, it instantly does something to you. And boy, does he know how to use sound and music in his films. 
David Lynch worked on the sound design with collaborator Alan Split for more than a year for his debut feature film, Eraserhead. Creating sounds through unorthodox folly techniques, they produced a host of dark ambient sounds full of static hiss, gargles, and eerie clangs. But the music that is most synonymous with the film is In Heaven, Lady in the Radiator song, performed by a moon-faced lady in the radiator, with the lyrics being written by David Lynch himself. This song is hauntingly beautiful. I think what makes this song so mesmerizing is how much it stands out from the rest of the noise. It's soft, melodic, beautiful, with a touch of eeriness. Juxtaposed with all the hustle and bustle of clanging, rattling sounds, it stands out. And it works because the scene stands out. The contrast between the noise and the beautiful interlude reflects one of the major themes of the film, which is contrasts. Contrast between black and white, hell and heaven, and truth and vision. David Lynch then erases the line between dream and reality, where Henry the protagonist's inner psyche merges with the physical world. This contrast is again highlighted with the beautiful song, dark lyrics, undertones, and meaning serenaded by the lady in the radiator. Number three, the Pixies Where's My Mind from Fight Club perfect song to end the film. There's just enough angst in the song to pair up with Edward Norton's iconic line while retaining the sense of rest or at least pause in the midst of all the chaos that had ensued. The song ushers in a breather for us and the narrator. Perfect ending, no notes. Number two, These Days by Nico from the Royal Tenenbaums. Another director whose soundtracks are heavily rotated on my Spotify playlists is Wes Anderson. Perhaps I could make another video just on Wes Anderson's music, but for this list, the one that comes to mind has got to be These Days by Nico from the Royal Tenenbaums. The scene itself is so whimsical and beautiful, we instantly see the love shoot up Richie's face just from seeing Margot. But it's the song that elevates the whole scene. The smooth finger picking of the guitar, soft melody, Nico's sad angelic voice. I can't imagine any other song for this scene. Paired by Margot's intense gaze, the slow walk with her hair flowing almost in sync with Nico, it's just a match made in music movie heaven. Don't hate me for this one. But I was the key demographic for Twilight when the books and movies came out, and I will stand by that Twilight and New Moon had some great soundtracks. Although the songs were good, it doesn't mean that it lifted the films. However, I have one exception, which is Possibility from New Moon. It still gives me the feels. It rests in the back of my mind when I'm in a self-pitying mood, looking out the window pretending as if the seasons are changing in front of me. It's not the greatest cinematic experience ever, but I need to be honest, this song and scene did do a little something something for me. And isn't that the point of any movie or any art form that your audience has some emotional connection to the art? And I was maybe 13 years old at the time. My feelings are valid and I stick by it. Number one, a real hero from Drive. It's been more than a decade and the chokehold this song has on me has not loosened even a bit. The song and the movie are so synonymous with each other. I can't think of the movie without thinking about this song and vice versa. I play this song and I can still vividly see the idyllic scene of Ryan Gosling as the driver living out a what-if scenario in his mind, of being, as the song states, a human being and a hero to Carrie Mulligan's character and her son. I can feel the emotions as if it were the first time I watched it, as well as the emotions of the driver. This longing, this amazing feeling of possibilities finally opening up for us, wishful thinking with a twinge of sadness. I think the fact that the song comes quite unexpectedly and is so soft in comparison to the rest of the soundscape and narrative of the film really hits the audience hard. The dreamy, soft electronic melody makes for an unexpected yet very welcome interlude. For a man of few words, we are transcended into the driver. We know how he's feeling and what he's thinking. I just can't get enough of it. So what do you think? Do you agree with this list? Comment down below which music movie scenes resonates with you the most. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more movie and TV content. Thanks, I'll see you soon. Bye!